Listen up, Charlotte. There's a new Safer Rideshare app coming to the city called Scoop M, and they're hiring drivers now. Drivers can make 15% more than other rideshare companies, and they treat their drivers better. Sign up now at www.scoopme.com. When you talk a lot. Yeah, when I talk a lot, I just be, like, nervous when I got to get in front of a mic. But imagine that the mic is the same mic that you have yeah. on when you're leading the class. What's the difference? That is true. But it's like... I just not, I don't need to know the mic is on because <laughs> I'm telling you, motivational speaker, here we go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm excited though. I am but no, too. it was a whole handful of cancellations. I canceled and about eight times. About eight. Hey. Let's go ahead and tell the truth. <laughs> For real. So why now though? Because come out of your fear. Yeah. Fear, faith, or fear, Michelle. Yeah. I got faith. But you know what? Will Smith says, <gasps> Fear is yeah. faith or mm. over overcoming, like looking fear in the face yeah. is a testament of faith. That's true. So that's what you're doing today. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is my test. This is my testimony. You are like so known. And let, let me introduce. Okay. Please wait, introduce. Wait, wait, let me introduce because yeah. uh, people know who you are, but they don't know who you are. Oh. This is another episode of Let's Talk Game. I'm your host, Tiffany Lewis, and today we have Michelle Bennett on the show. And what you all got to eavesdrop on is how many times <laughs> she <laughs> canceled the invitation. You know, it was like she was she even suggested, hey, let's do this podcast, Tiffany. And <laughs> and then she would <laughs> and will then I that back out. in. Mm-hmm. Will that back in. Yeah. And so, but she's here today. And so we yeah. led in with the fear versus faith and uh-huh. And um, yeah, and that's what you were talking about. Yeah. It's just that I don't know what it is. <laughs> I can talk in a crowd. I can talk anywhere. But it, when it comes to the mic in my face, I don't know. I'm just like, uh, but I shouldn't be like that. So, Take us through your journey. Um, I mean, you're a North Carolina girl. North Carolina girl. Grew up in Greensboro. Yeah. Graduated in 85. Mm-hmm. Went to beauty school. Graduate that in 86. A lot of people don't know that about you, do yes, they? Yes, honey. I, I just like to make people feel and look beautiful. Mm-hmm. So went to Leon's Beauty School and did that until 2008 mm-hmm. and got into the training. And then a shift. It just shifted. My husband got a job in Charlotte. I was driving back and forth. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm, this might not work. Mm-hmm. So I said, let me get into fitness. That's still helping people. And, you know, and that's where it like really started. So you knew, I mean, because you said it and I, and some people don't understand the correlation between a career shift. Like, hey, at the base level, I am still helping transform right. people. So you were transforming people in the beauty style of seat, mm-hmm. making them look and feel good mm-hmm. outside and probably inside, too, because yeah. I think what you speak is powerful, is transformative. And then you just one day said, I'm going to go into personal training. I'm going to training because um, fitness was big, I mean, important to me. And so I was like, if I want to look and feel good, somebody else will want to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So I got into that. We moved um, South Charlotte. Then um, Michael, um, Jordan, and Yvette um, would come in to the gym, and I would train um, with them. And one day the owner said, hey, Michelle, you want to work here? People want to want you know to work out with you. I'm like, me? Okay. So I said, uh, not really. Yeah. I just want to have a little free time. But then I got into it and love it. And that's how I met Tiffany. (laughs) (laughs) About almost, well, my daughter's four. And so almost five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I met you. Yeah. I'll never forget when I came to the gym and you know, it's not many sisters in there, right? And so I remember you and Seth were on this row machine and you gave me this look like, who is this? (laughs) I'll never forget it. Damn. But yeah, and so if you if I would have allowed that, like, oh, okay, well, yeah. you know, it was just like uh, yeah, a I first impression that yeah. it was totally. But I was really like, oh, I know that sister here. <laughs> yeah. And so and that's who, who is Michelle this? is. Right. And it was like, hey, you embrace me ever since. And oh, um, I appreciate no. that. Except standing you up on <laughs> But we're here now. We're here. I'm so excited. We're here. You decided for yourself in the moment, I am going to train. And so what has been like some of the biggest 
some of the biggest highs of being a trainer because that's the, you're more than that. So we're not going to just talk. This whole show is not about the biggie about yeah. personal training, but right. you're more than that. Right. But what is what are some Motivating. of the biggest highs? Yeah, people come in and they are like, oh, down on themselves about this, mm -hmm. low about this, guys. You, everybody's going through different yeah. things. But when you come in and you speak, you're going to have an awesome day. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel good. Don't worry about your pain or whatever. Just give it to God and say, hey, help me get through the day. You'll feel better. So yeah. that's what I really, really like. Saying good morning. How are you? Hey, good looking. How, you yeah. Know, just making people feel good. I, I don't know if you know this, but I, while I was preparing for today, I kind of said, you know what, who does she remind me of? And so I do listen to podcasts, but uh -huh. if I had to set the stage, you like to me liking Tina Turner, right? It's like a slow warm up, but you you know she's gonna take you there. And so little by little, even in your class, mm -hmm. your one-on-one -on -one sessions, you turn the heat up yeah. steadily and surely. And by the time it's over, like people ready, they're just all yeah. in, you've won them that's over. Yeah. And so like, that's who I like in you too. So like, where does that come from? Where does that charisma, that confidence about yourself come from? I think my dad and my grandmother, Yeah. Used to, oh, my grandmother was a cosmetologist, owned salons in Maryland. Mm -hmm. So I went with her and she was always like, honey, you going to be smart. You is beautiful. <laughs> I was, and she just said, have confidence, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Just feel good about yourself. If you feel good about yourself, others will feel good about you. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, she's happy all the time. Yeah. Sometimes I have bad days, but it doesn't need to show on the outside. Like, oh, I'm having a bad day. Yeah. Woe is me. No. I'm having a good day because I'm alive. So you're definitely having a good day. And then my dad, who is a minister in um, Greensboro and um, president of the NAACP, he just, hey, baby girl, no matter what, mm -hmm. if you get a, a D in school, an A in school, <laughs> you are smart and you are beautiful. That was his favorite words. I was like, I could have been in that movie because that's exactly <laughs> what he told me. So it just, I just kept that. So you believed it. Believed and achieved it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, so do you think as far as like, I know you have siblings, right? And yeah. so do you think they got the same dose or you are like, uh, you stand out in a different way? I mean, because it's something different about you, you know, yeah, like. I think I, we're eight years apart. Okay. So my sisters are like, um, Michelle, you're just always bubbly. Don't you just... So I pump them up. Mm -hmm. Guys, it's okay to have bad days. I'm yeah. not saying that. I'm saying don't turn your bad days into just terrible days. Mm -hmm. Enjoy and, and just push through. Mm -hmm. Give it to God and move on. So that's where your fire comes from. Your dad, your grandmother set the foundation. Mm -hmm. And so, but you, you're talking about God. So like pull from that. Like what, oh, what is, what is that relationship? Everything. Yeah. I mean, just growing up because my father was a minister, mm -hmm. my mom, my grandmother, everybody was in the church. I was used to be like, oh, we got to go to church again. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how long we got to stay this time? I was that preacher's kid yeah. in the back, chewing the gum, yeah. hiding. I didn't do nothing. Could, I don't know. Could you pop so, gum? Yeah. <laughs> I could pop gum. I'm telling you, I would get called out in the pulpit. Yeah. Shelly, stop doing that. So growing, and then once I moved away, I moved to New Jersey, mm -hmm. came back, um, moved to Germany. I was married before. I didn't and, know about the Germany part. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was married before. Yeah. Came back. Mm -hmm. I just said, you know what, God? Let me just stay still yeah. and let you work my life. And let me let me not um try to figure it out. Yeah. Then he sent Seth into my life. And it's just it just has moved from that. Just um seeing God work in different ways mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. You know, some believe and some don't, but you better believe somebody got you up this morning. That's Egg, just right. I mean, the sky, the trees, and everything. So, the Michelle in in New Jersey versus the Michelle in Charlotte. <laughs> that was a bad girl. <laughs> that was a bad girl. In the aspect of it, it was just me. Yeah. So you know, I come and go. Mm -hmm. I was free. Um, had a salon, his and hers, mm -hmm. on Halsey Street in Jersey, and I just it was just. It was moving and popping. It was moving and popping. 15, 16 girls yeah. in there. 
and guys and Biz Markey lived around the corner. Mm -hmm. We just, you know, living the life. But you knew it was something more. Oh, yeah. And I knew when it was time to get out of there. <laughs> That's it. It's time to go. So then again, you uh, again, and I, I'm going to take it back to when you made that decision. So when did you make that decision? And like, what was it? Like, do you remember that day, what you were feeling? What was it? It was like, hey. Um, I said, I'm at rock bottom. Yeah. I'm either going to do hair again. Yeah. Or I've got to do something. And God just spoke to said, okay, you're living with your mom. Mm -hmm. This is not you. Mm -hmm. Step out on faith. Go back and do hair. Yeah. And within a week, went back. Clients came back, moved out. And that's when I said, that's God. Because could nobody bring my clients back like that? Because we didn't have cell phones. Oh, we wow. Had bag phones. That's context, folks. Yeah. We had no <laughs> cell phones. So. The bag phones with the Velcro. Yeah. <laughs> That was it. And so it just worked. And from that day, it was just like, you know what, God? He said, just let me work this mm -hmm. and I'll work it out for you. See, I think a lot of people look at you and they believe, I mean, because you're such a motivating force and because you are so like popping and you have it, you it's know, so right. right. See, no, that's, no, that's but my it's true. My words come from this girl right here. Thanks. But too. it's true though. And so, but people don't believe there was ever oh. a rock bottom oh, or yeah, if yeah. there was ever like a, Hey, I got to, you know, oh, yeah. revamp or re rework oh, myself, yeah. you know, rework everything. Yeah. Attitude. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was just going to just happen and yeah. happen. And no. Yeah. Um, so your faith is unwaveringly strong, like, right. Mm -hmm. What was it that pushes you into a deeper relationship with God? Like, I mean, was it a, was it a situation? Was it I a... would take a situation. I got um we got married. Seth and I got married, mm -hmm. and Seth um maybe seven years five five and a half no six years. Um, I'll never forget. Seth was like, "Are we having kids?" I'm like, "No, yeah, it's just gonna be us, well, girl, <laughs> honey. It's not gonna be me and you. I'm gonna have to go with somebody else." I'm like, "For real? Over a kid?" So I got with some girlfriends. I say, "Hey." Are we gonna have kids? They're mm -hmm. like, no. I was like, we gotta have one. So it was three of us. I'll never forget it. And she was like, what do we gotta do? We gotta do something so we can have kids. Yeah. So um, her daughter was born in January. Another friend was February. Mm -hmm. And Seth was born in March. But I had a fibroid that came about. And the doctor was like, uh, most kids don't make it with a fibroid growing at this um, size. I'm like, what? And he said, we're just going to monitor you and everything. So every day, I prayed every day, Lord, please, a healthy boy. Yeah. And because girls, I would have them like a, <laughs> like a little tomboy. I know Tom, I know Tom girl, she would have just been like, you know. Uh. Um, so you prayed for a boy. Prayed for a healthy boy. And my fibroid was six pounds mm -hmm. and my son was seven. Wow. So they were just like, what? So that was a big turning point. You know, yeah. God just took me straight through and, so, and worked all the way up to it all the way my c-section was monday mm -hmm. my last day working with my clients was saturday mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock and so you have a beautiful son set little seth uh -huh. you call him or seth jr yeah. right um who what 17 he's 17 goes to charlotte christian mm -hmm. and is a senior and so and then y'all have been married 20 November the 25th will be 26 years. That's awesome. No, it's 24 years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, you're, 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 you're just, you know, because look, you, you got to add in some cushion. I mean, we met in July. Yeah. We got married. No, we got engaged in August mm -hmm. and we got married November. Wow. 25th. Yeah. That's a story in it. That's a story, That's of a story in itself. Yeah. It of is. Faith. Yeah. I just said, I'm not going to date a long time. We either like each other love each other or we don't yeah and so the thyroid oh the fibroid fibroid sorry honey it was well you've been with me that right, thing was right like, i was really good and then all of a sudden when i hit like 48 49 i said this thing is growing again so just eight weeks ago mm -hmm. i had a um hysterectomy partial hysterectomy and i had it on a Friday, I was back at work on Wednesday. Awesome doctor. Wow. And I feel so much better. 
So like, talk about that. I mean, people, do yes. you think being in the health and wellness industry, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's something where men, both, both men and women try to kind of deal with um, instead of taking, you know, taking the, the initiative to take advantage of getting the proper care and right. attention? Like, do you, pe do you believe people just try to deal with whatever the yes, issues are? Yes, they do. Because I did. <laughs> 17 years. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not getting that done. It'll go away. Food. Oh, well, I won't eat meat anymore. Yeah. Oh, I'll only eat vegetables. No, it just didn't go anywhere. So if a doctor tells you, hey, Michelle, you have high blood pressure. Okay, you work out every day. You do everything right. Why? You just have high blood pressure. Take your medicine. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, it can help, you know, or whatever. Just don't take medicine in your own hands and say, oh, I'll just deal with it. Oh, I got cholesterol. I just won't eat shrimp next week. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so why did you, why, why seven? And that's why I wanted to kind of set the stage because of course I know yeah. um, how old your son is and like what that looked like. But if you just kind of talk about it, people could believe that was just, you know, five years ago. Right. right? So that's why I wanted to kind of allow you to allow them, like, what was it to know? Why did you wait? Why did you wait to? Because really it never gave me any problems. Mm -hmm. And my doctor would say, Oh, you know, don't mess with things that don't, you know, yeah. aren't messing with you. So I didn't have any problems. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I am gaining serious weight here. Yeah. And so she was like, well, you're not pregnant. I said, are you sure? Like, it's something. So when they measured, she was like, but your fibroid is growing. So I um, said, what should we do? So I was riding in the car one day and it said 1-800-FIBROID. And so I was like, okay, Lord, really? I mean, am I supposed to call? So I said, let me call. Went over there to him, um, to over to um, the doctor. And he said, well, we can cut all the blood supply off. But there's a small chance that we might cut wrong and you'll have a pelvic infection. I said, what? No. And he said, that, that can be dangerous. So I was like, a pelvis infection? Okay, okay, no. So I said, let me go see my gynecologist. And she said, um, Michelle, I tell you what, let's just go ahead and do it. You're not having any more kids? I said, no. She said, let's just do a hysterectomy. Yeah. I said, but am I going to be out of work like six and eight, nine, ten weeks? You, I think maybe let's do it. You might be out just two to three weeks. I said, that's still a long time. She said, well, let's just take one day at a time and let's just do it. So did it. Felt good. Went walking that same day with Seth. And I was like, mm, I'm feeling pretty good. I think I can go back. If you, I think I put more mental, like I can do this. Your, your mind can play tricks on you. Mm -hmm. I don't really feel good. Yeah. Or I don't, I, I can't, oh, I can't walk. But I think my mind was like, you can do this, Michelle. Um, I had a C-section, mm -hmm. went back to work in two weeks, mm -hmm. three weeks. And just, so I think your mind can just play tricks on you that where you're like, Oh, well, I can just, I'm not feeling that well, but I felt great. And then you bounce back. Bounce back. Because that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what, what you I do. do. I, I, yeah, but I, that's what I want others to do. Just don't like, woe is me, or be sad about a situation that you're in. Give it to God. Mm -hmm. And and, and he, I promise you, he'll get you through. Yeah. Promise. And then you have an amazing support your husband so who you mentioned earlier and so it's no uh yeah, mystery. my mom my dad yeah. my step i mean everybody so many my sisters yeah mm -hmm. friends yeah yeah so seth um seth bennett he is on part of the executive staff at the charlotte hornets i mm -hmm. know you talked about that right and so how do you ensure how do you all you know as a unit and then you individually ensure that that lifestyle doesn't overshadow who you all are as a couple right. and I guess most importantly, like, you know, like your purpose, right? Because you've talked a lot about faith mm -hmm. and everything like that. So that's important. Like how right. do you ensure that that doesn't overshadow you guys? Mm -hmm. Seth is really good with all of that. Seth is a um, senior VP for the Hornets and he over marketing and he, when he comes home, there's nothing about work. Yeah. Now, when I go home, if it's a problem, I was like, well, Seth, you know, such and such, Michelle, either deal with the situation mm -hmm. or move on from the situation. Don't dwell on the situation because it's not going to get any better. You either just deal with it or move on. So he it's a balance. Um, 
if it is a problem at work or something, you know, we'll discuss or laugh or joke about it. We keep, um, I'm a, I'm a life of the party person. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to get me down. So when Seth is down, it's real easy just to, you know, pick him back up and, um, I, we stay busy and, you know, I think that's really helped us like a lot. Yeah. Just, we're just busy. Now our son is getting ready to graduate. So I'm like, Seth, it's me and you. <laughs> he said, you better get a hobby. <laughs> I said, oh, and maybe I'll come hang out with Tiffany all the time. No, it's not. It's going to be for real. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That, that, that's what I want to do. Yeah. I want to, yeah, I want to hang out with Tiffany because Seth is like, you've got to get a hobby because mm -hmm. you can't just, you want to play golf? No, I don't want, well, Michelle, you're going to have to get a hobby. So we're going to have to start working on that. Yeah. Um, stay tuned, folks. Yes. That's all I have to we say. We will be right here. <laughs> so oh. when are you still, though? When are you, when are Never. you still? Oh, when I sleep, when you I sleep. wear my Fitbit and it says you're up and you're down, you're restless. But I don't know. I don't need a lot of rest. I just need to like chill sometimes. I like watching um, any sport. Any sport. Any sport. Even cricket. You could watch some cricket or some yeah. <laughs> Josh. Because <laughs> I could like, I could watch cricket. It could be anything. I just like sports. Yeah. So they're like, Michelle, you watch reality TV? I did. And then I was like, I got my own reality like yeah, TV. I yeah. don't even. So I just gave all that up. So you just watching sports and pop sports, and getting like five hours of sleep at night. And you can. And if you say I can work out every vacation, they know. Make sure they have a gym because Michelle's not going to stay there. <laughs> they know. It's just, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to do a uh, game to game. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, no, before we do that, oh, before, wait, wait, wait. Before, before we do that, because you're an exceptional mom and I don't want to leave this out. And so me being a mom, mm -hmm. I'm kind of a newbie in the game. Right. Um, I think this is like important to help, you know, you can't help everyone. You can't mentor everybody, right. everyone. But if you can just throw something out there to the younger moms, like, like navigating their career. And if they don't know what direction to go to, you know, in right with their life mm -hmm. or family. Right. I mean, what would you say to them? You really have to know yourself. Yeah. And, and how much you can put on your plate. Um, we have one kid, but if you come over our house, it's 10 boys there. Right. All the time. So as a mom, you just want to balance. Like, um, my household knows mom likes to work out as soon as she gets up. Mm -hmm. So let's not fool with mom too mm -hmm. much. Um, so, in life, you just need to just know what you like. Yeah. Make sure you do what you like and you can still be the best mom because when you're the best, your kids be the best and just, you know, show happiness to them. I mean, just be a happier person around them because they follow everything you do. I can say that even at two and four. They, they, everything yeah. you do. Yeah. You're going to be like, oh, I didn't pick that up. <laughs> like, Yeah. As the fire and sprinklers yeah, appliance of Wayne hey. is advertising on our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> but just know you who you are. Yeah. And be there for them. Support them mm -hmm. when they're small all the way up. Yeah. Just be a great um, role model and support supporter. And you're strong in that. So shout out to you. Thank a you. phenomenal woman, a, a phenomenal mom. So let's do game to game. Are oh, you ready? Game to game. Y'all ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Don't so make them hard, no, yeah. it's not hard. You oh. trying to look at you trying to I, look at what it says. Oh, yeah. No. So I say bra or no bra. You no bra. Bra is Friday. <laughs> that is my oh. I'ma come up with that. Bra is Friday. Women, just let go. Yes. Why on Fridays though? Well, you know, only on Friday. It's seven no, days I, a week. I, I could do seven days a week, yeah. but I'm only gonna scare people a little bit on <laughs> uh, one day. Brawless Fridays. You just come up with that. Okay. All and right. so, what would that look like? Are people are women being liberated? Yes. But we're not in the G family. Well, no, well, 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 wait a minute. I just think I'm when I say brawless Friday, you can have on like, <laughs> like even if you wear a sports bra, not a wire bra yeah. on Friday. Just yeah. be free, lose. Yeah, yeah. Um, squats or pull ups? Uh, squats. Yeah. Y'all yeah. haven't y'all have not seen her, but her cheeks sit right. Okay, listen, legs. <laughs> 
<laughs> and look at him like, hey, they go out there. Go out there. Um, legs? Yeah. Pull-ups. I mean, we're going to wear shirts. But your legs, <laughs> you squats. Squats. You get it, girl. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite cheat food? Ooh, how many do I get? Or cheat food? Okay. Pizza. Well, let's do three. Okay, pizza. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, pizza. Um, chocolate chip cookies and French fries. Okay, yes. sweet potato or just regular? No, oh, sweet Idaho potato, potato fries. fries. Um, like Chick Fil A, oh, waffle yeah, fries, yeah. or McDonald's yeah. French fries, something. That's I uh, will. Yes. Okay. Um, being married to you is like. Ooh. <laughs> Say wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. This is a good one. <laughs> being married to me is like the Fourth of July. It's just excitement all the time. It is. I believe that. And pl- uh, no, no. Let me take that one back. Being married to me is like. What's a movie with kids that like to play a lot? Because Seth said you're so playful, Michelle. Just you got to keep it playful. You got to, yeah, yeah. Um, what's a movie like that? But just like a play, good play um, movie with kids. What was it? What's the movie that Michael was in with Bugs Bunny? Oh, um, Space Jam. Being yeah. married to me is like Space Jam. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it really is. Because yeah. They were sad sometimes, and they were, you know, mostly happy. Yeah, yeah. that's a good movie. I, I I have revisited a lot of those movies, having, right. having, ones. yeah, little ones. So that's a good movie. They got new movies out now. I know they do. Some of them are a little too complex for where we yeah. are. It's a little too much. So yeah, right. but this was awesome. And on behalf of SCSM, I wanted to present to you the God First Family Then yes! basketball shirt. Yes, honey. Do y'all see this? This it's is so awesome. <laughs> God first, honey. You see that? Wear it on Brawlers Friday. I, oh, look, yes. I, <laughs> I got some coffee on I, there, I, it look like. You did, don't get no. It's okay, honey. This right here is awesome. I want to thank you, Tiffany. Thank and you, And guys, Michelle. I'll be here with her. This is my new hobby. So I'll well, be over there well, sometimes. Hey, and over here. Well, it's mm-hmm. not going to be a hobby. We're going to. We're, gonna we're monetizing. It. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. But, okay. but look for her. She said it. I, you. Now, I've already got through this. Now, y'all not going to get rid of me. (laughs) Y'all want to see me next Friday? I'll be right here. This is another episode of Let's Talk Game, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe, comment, share your feedback and thoughts on iTunes or Spotify. And email me, T. Lewis at SCSM Sports with questions, uh, any topics you want to hear or see on a show. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, But this is not a... And this is a new beginning a of new beginning. things that we're going to have going on. So I look forward to that. Awesome. All right. We'll be at different locations. We'll love it. <laughs> Thank you. Good stuff.